Welcome back to Comedy Life and my mobile studio office. Whether you want to take your existing career mobile, or perhaps you're looking for a casual online job so you can extend your travels, or perhaps you fancy escaping the desk and working in remote, invigorating locations for a few days a month. Building a mobile office is a great investment. It's a fun project for you to get stuck into this year, and it can significantly improve your quality of life. I've got loads of great tips and lessons learned from the past four years of building and using this off-grid mobile office. From endless green energy to Wi-Fi connectivity and security and comfort whilst working off-grid in any climate. That's all coming up in this episode, which is kindly sponsored by Intel. They've upgraded me to this Samsung Galaxy Book 2 with a new 12th generation Intel Core processor. Having the right equipment as the foundation of your off-grid office makes a huge difference. Believe me. The new Intel Evo laptops were designed specifically for people like me that need a machine powerful enough to edit videos and run a business. That is a heavy workload, and I was genuinely surprised how well it performs. It's a bit of a myth that Apple is a better option for creators, but that's not true. Intel Evo laptops are easily as powerful if not more so. And they've been designed specifically to be ultra portable. I mean, crazy slim and all whilst being ultra versatile. Touch screen. Having the right equipment really is the foundation of building an off-grid office. But let's have a look at what other areas we need to consider. All right, equipment aside, how you actually design and build your office workspace is very important. As many of us who are doing van builds are also building our own furniture, it's vitally important that you design the seats in a way that they are comfortable to sit on for a long work day. It's worth paying extra for high quality foam. I went for slightly denser foam with memory foam bonded to it, which has lasted very well through thousands of hours of use. It's important to factor in the ergonomics of your desk setup too. You want to make the desk very easy to deploy. Something that just slides out rather than having to be assembled is ideal. When your office is mobile, it's important to be able to sit down and get to work quickly. I've mentioned this before, but it's a good idea to have an external keyboard, mouse and laptop riser. It can really help to keep you comfortable on a long work day. They also pack up really easy and are great if you're working elsewhere for the day. In a mobile office, you have windows all around you and sometimes you can get some glare. So it's useful to have some lightweight material or curtains that can diffuse the light and provide privacy without blocking the light out entirely. Sometimes when I get to a new town and I'm looking for a place to park and work for the day, I can't always find a nice rural location to work with good internet. And I end up working in a sports field or a park or something similar where I can access good mobile internet. One thing to consider is that when you're in public spaces, there's often other people around and that can be distracting. It certainly was for me at first, but you do get used to it. That's definitely got a lot easier since I have my Intel Evo laptop because it has intelligent collaboration built in. So I can do things like blur the background during meetings so that I look my best, it cuts out distractions and it doesn't affect the battery life or performance, which is pretty sweet. A final and really important point is to have different functional areas in your vehicle because you don't want to have your office use the same workspace as your kitchen um, and you don't want to have to make your bed to be able to sit down and work and this is particularly important for couples and for small families because you need to be able to work in a separate area while other functions are happening inside of your mobile office slash adventure rig. You're going to need an off-grid power system to power your mobile office. I've got a complete guide and other videos on how to do that on my website. But to look at the main components, you will need at least one 12 volt DC battery, one or multiple ways to recharge that battery, either from an AC hookup, your alternator or solar panels, an inverter to provide AC mains power from your DC battery for your equipment, like your laptop, as well as USB sockets and LED lights for your office. That is a bare minimum. The best battery for your mobile office are lithium iron phosphate. They have way more usable power and importantly, recharge much quicker. They're expensive, but yes, it is definitely worth the investment. It's important to use energy efficient devices too. My Intel Evo laptop lasts all day and is incredibly fast to recharge. I get four hours more usage with just a 30 minute charge, which is astonishing. This is actually really important because nothing kills your productivity like a dead battery. So investing in the best battery technology in both your mobile office and the equipment you're using 
is well worth it. If you don't want to build your own off-grid power system in your mobile office, you can purchase a ready-made portable power station. These units aren't cheap, but they contain everything you need to power your mobile office in one somewhat chunky portable package. I'll be making a video about what's the best option, a portable power station or building your own DIY version in a new video coming soon, so stay tuned for that. But as a little hint, for most people, a portable power station could well be a very good option. Of course, the best way to replenish power in your mobile office is obviously with solar panels. And here we have the choice between fixed, flexible, and pop-up. Fixed panels have the advantage of providing more shade, are more durable, and last longer. The downside is that they can be more difficult to mount on your roof, and they're heavier. Flexible solar panels are obviously much easier to install. They can follow the curve of your roof and you can just stick them on. But the problem is that they don't perform as well and they don't last as long. The major advantage of installing solar panels on your roof, either permanently or semi-permanently, is that they're always working, even when you're just waking up or you're away from your vehicle. The alternative is pop-up solar panels. Pop-up solar panels are great because you can store them inside your vehicle and only use them when you need them. Like the portable power station, they can also be moved to other vehicles. The disadvantage is that you always have to set them up and adjust your solar panels to get the ultimate performance. And that's not always convenient. It's important to note that if you're working a full-time job, you're gonna need to invest in a power system that has sufficient capacity for you to be able to work all day. And that usually means larger batteries, which can definitely mean it's more expensive. The good news is there are five types of people who can reduce the size and cost of their power system. People that do a lot of driving, that's people that maybe they're on a long road trip tour and they might plan to work every other day as they travel. People that only work a few hours a day, if that's you, please send me an email with some productivity tips. People that are planning to stay in campsites with power hookups. People who have portable devices and can work in different environments. It's a good idea anyway to mix up your work environment and you might well want to spend some time working in a cafe or a co-working space just to keep things fresh. And if that's you, you'll be able to invest in a power system which is smaller and more modest in size and capacity. If you are relying on solar panels to power your off-grid mobile office, you should consider Consider that solar power significantly reduces outside of the summer season. This is the reason why I overspec the amount of solar power needed for my camper van because I knew that I would be working in the shoulder season. It's also the reason why I made my solar panels tiltable so I could maximize my energy harvest during these months and still work full time during the shorter daylight hours. Speaking of shorter days, if you are working in cooler environments and you need an off grid heat source, Diesel and petrol heaters are the best option for off-grid offices. That's what we've got. But bear in mind they are going to require a little bit of battery power to keep them running. So factor that in. The next best option is a propane heater followed by a log burner. But they do take a lot of work. If you're planning on working a lot from a campsite and you're going to have access to AC electricity, then a mini electric heater is the best option for you. It's much more likely that you'll be making the most of your mobile office during the summer months. It's challenging to run air conditioning on a battery powered system, so when it's hot you'll need to make sure that your ventilation is on point. Having bug covers for your windows and doors is also a great idea, as well as a fan that can be used also whilst it's raining. If it's really hot I use a portable USB fan which I can put on my desk here, or this fancy neck fan which is actually really good at keeping you cool. And the advantage of both of these devices is they're low power so they don't consume a lot of the energy you otherwise need for your mobile office and being productive. In terms of building mods you should consider, reflective blinds actually make the biggest difference in terms of ambient temperature both in winter and summer. Having a loaded roof rack blocks a lot of the sun out in the hottest part of the day and also a vehicle that is painted with a light colour makes an astonishing difference to internal temperatures. An awning really helps to keep it cool inside as well as the office not feeling too claustrophobic if you happen to get rained in for the day. Let's talk about connectivity because your mobile office is going to want to have a decent internet connection. Most of the time I just use my mobile phone um, and I use my home provider, and you're probably gonna want to do the same if you're traveling around your own country. If you are roaming and going overseas, uh, check with your local provider to make sure that they've got a decent roaming policy. Um, and if that doesn't work, the next best option is to find a local SIM from 
someone in the country where you're going. Tethering your laptop to your phone's internet should only really be a temporary solution because in practice, this type of connection is intermittent and not very consistent or reliable, particularly so if you're connecting multiple devices. A portable MiFi device is better and is what I've been using for years, but it does tend to overheat if you use it for a long period of time and the signal is not that good if you use it in remote locations, so this is not ideal. Installing an external antenna and a more robust Wi-Fi router is a great idea if your internet connection is vital to your work. I'm currently in the process of upgrading my mobile internet connection in this mobile office, so stay tuned for a video on that in the near future. Satellite options, although kind of pricey, are getting better and can give you the best connection in truly remote locations, but typically they can't be used where you're moving and I definitely need that. It's not hard to find a place to park up your mobile office with a good 4G or better connection these days. And the devices I've mentioned will cast your own Wi-Fi signal inside your vehicle, and that's what I connect to with my laptop. This Intel Evo laptop has Wi-Fi 6E, which gives me an incredibly fast connection. But to be honest, this new technology is best suited for when I'm working in other, more congested locations and public spaces. Connecting to public Wi-Fi in a busy campsite, for example. With Wi-Fi 6E, I know I get the best connection possible, and it's nearly three times faster than standard Wi-Fi. It's actually rapid. Securing your mobile office is something that's often overlooked, but if you have valuables in your vehicle, you're definitely gonna to wanna to give that some thought. When you're working inside your vehicle, be wary of your surroundings and who might be watching you working on your laptop and might be waiting for you to leave your van. Extra external locks are available for the outside of your vehicle to secure up the doors and deter thieves if you're gonna be leaving your valuables inside your vehicle for extended periods of time. We have a lockable secure cupboard which was purpose built to be strong and reinforced. Even if I'm just leaving for a few moments to stretch my legs, I do put my laptop out of sight. My Intel Evo laptop has an instant wake feature of less than one second and this kind of responsiveness is really useful in this scenario as well as the performance in general it's made a massive difference to my productivity. We've looked at equipment, ergonomics, environmental factors as well as power systems and connectivity and I hope you can see some of the things that go into making the ultimate mobile office. I've worked on the road for a long time and I definitely recommend that you give it a go you will not regret it. And if you are interested in an Intel Evo laptop, I will leave a link in the description below so you can check out the options. For me, Intel Evo clearly offers the best overall laptop experience and the fact that they come in more options and variety is a bonus too. I've been very happy and astounded by the performance and portability, and I'm excited to see where it will take me and you in the year ahead. Thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year's and happy travels.